Hello, I'm Dr. Cheryl Dunn, and I'm here to demonstrate an intermediate financial accounting problem for a fictitious company called Hoosel Acres, Inc. And Hoosel Acres, Inc. has purchased equipment with a financing arrangement, and we're going to take a look at that financing arrangement and figure out the present value of that arrangement. So take a look at the problem. Pause the video for as long as you need to read it. Let's start by drawing a timeline of the payments involved in this financing arrangement. We can see that right now we're here. After one year, nothing happens. After two years, nothing happens. At the end of the third year, we'll make a $10,000 payment. And then we'll continue with that at the end of the fourth year, at the end of the fifth year, at the end of the sixth year, at the end of the seventh year, at the end of the eighth year, and finally at the end of the ninth year, we'll make our seventh and final payment. What we're trying to figure out is what is the value of this payment stream here at time equals zero, the present. So what we're trying to get is the present value of this payment stream. And this payment stream, whenever we have a payment stream that's equal amounts over equal periods of time, that is an annuity. But when the first payment is delayed beyond one period, then that's what we call a deferred annuity. And to figure out the present value of that, we're going to have to do it in two steps. Because the first thing we'll have to do is to discount all of these payments back to here, at which point this is an ordinary annuity. When, we're, when our first payment starts at the end of the first period, then it's considered an ordinary annuity. So we can figure out the present value of an ordinary annuity at time equals 2, or where the asterisk is. And then we can discount that back, the two periods, as a single amount. So we'll get the present value of a single amount. From time equals 2, to time equals zero. So we're going to get the present value of an ordinary annuity valued to here and then bring it back two periods. That's our steps for a deferred annuity. Now you might be wondering, could you get the present value at time equals three instead and consider this an annuity due? And the answer is yes, you could do it that way as well. Um, but we're just going to show it the one way, which is with an ordinary annuity at time t equals 2. Okay, the interest rate in question is 6%. That's an annual interest rate, and we're compounding annually, and so we don't need to convert the annual rate into anything else. And what we need to do is find the present value factors in these two tables. So take a look first at the present value of an ordinary annuity table. And we're wanting the factor where the n equals 7 and i equals 6%. So see if you can find that factor where those two things intersect. As you can see from the table, that factor is 5.58238. If we then multiply that by the $10,000 that we'll be paying each year for those seven periods, 
that gives us 55,823 dollars and 80 cents. That then is the amount that goes in here at time t equals 2 that we're going to then discount back two more periods. In other words, we're trying to figure out how much would we have to have here if we were able to earn 6% interest that after two years it would equal that amount. So next we're going to look in the present value of a single amount table or a lump sum, sometimes it's called. And again, we're looking for interest rate equals 6%, but this time we want n equals 2, because we're just discounting it back from time t equals 2 to time t equals 0. So take a look at the present value of a single amount table and find the factor where the interest rate is 6% and the n number of periods is 2. As you can see, that factor is 0 0.89000. And if we multiply that times the $55,823.80, that gives us the overall present value of this financing arrangement as $49,683.80. So there's the answer that we were looking for. That concludes this demonstration. Thank you for viewing and have a wonderful day.